the Atlas Construction Show is on the air. Sit back, relax, and listen as four generations of home builders you can trust guide you through their four-step building process that will take the guesswork out of building your dream home. And now, here's the host of our show, Mike Buck. Hey, hello, everybody, and welcome, and I hope you're having a great weekend. And, you know, if this Atlas Construction Company gets any bigger, I'm going to have to have our boss, Cupcake, buy me some more microphones. Because we just stuffed the studio. It's like that. How many guys can you get in a phone booth from Atlas? All of them, I think. Uh, I know that because it's Saturday and because you've heard a couple of things that immediately you want to know, one, two, three, how do you do ADUs? And we'll get to that a little bit. But there are a lot of other really important things. And I want to tell you, normally we record this program uh, earlier in the week. Uh, This week we recorded it on Friday because one of the many things that the the folks from Atlas did uh, was once again... Uh, be the strongest uh, a number of people at a seminar. This one was the BIA, and it was kind of interesting. You've heard us doing shows on this uh, Rodney Kim VP before, but agent in place. But you guys put your you know the rubber where the road is. You guys actually went and did this. What was that all about, and what did you expect, and what do you what did you guys pick up? Yeah. So as far as uh, the, the classes that we attended, it was part of the biz- Building Industry Association uh, that. Um, Although they do some lobbying and some stuff like that for the building industry, they, one, one of the main goals that they also do is education, right? So we take classes there to kind of further our knowledge in different parts of uh, construction and different design trends and stuff like that. So um, I have been certified as an agent in place specialist. My cousin Josh and Alan uh, went to their, it's called a certified agent in place uh, specialist. Uh, one and two class this mm-hmm. week. Uh, my cousin Nathan is taking it on the next coming round, and uh, we're really emphasizing this because we see the trend as far as the baby boomers growing and you know, kind of getting into retirement age and trying to get their homes to where it can be more aging in place, where you can kind of live in your home and, and modify it, or your new home, or you know, a new addition and modify it so that it works for you. Yeah, and you know, the the thing I talk about that all the time about you guys is that you walk the walk. I mean, I, I know that we've talked on other programs with everybody about some terms in the building industry that are being really pushed around. Uh, going green, for instance. I mean, green really means just open up your wallet and come out with all your green because a lot of people were, were misrepresenting. So it is important that when you get these questions coming from our seniors and coming from folks that are going to build into adapting a home or, you know, uh, reorganizing a home to allow seniors that you guys know what you're talking about. Yeah, it really does help. So when people call us and they say, hey, you know, we're talking, to, we're thinking about doing this addition or doing this new home. And, um, you know, although we're, you know, we're not retired yet, but, it, the, 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 you know, those days are coming up, say maybe in five to ten years we're looking at retirement. We want to make sure that our new home or our new addition is going to accommodate any kind of um, – future ailments that may happen, right? Okay, you know, and then the other side of the coin is I sort of, I guess, expect as a as a customer to a company that if I'm going to talk about aging in place, I want to talk to some old geezer who's been there, who's on his way. And, Alan, you're going to run into a problem because you're the young, the, <laughs> the young look of Atlas. Uh, how important is it that when you address one of your families that you and Josh and Nathan go out and do, that you immediately establish that rapport saying, I may, I may look like I'm right out of college, but I know what I'm doing because I've learned. Well, it is very important. I mean, that's uh, that's always been a hurdle for me, um, mm-hmm. especially being Asian. You look younger than you actually are, too. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but beyond that, I mean, um, you know, this class was, I mean, it was just a wealth of knowledge. Mm-hmm. Um, not only was it learning about um, how to um, design a home for someone that is in the situation that they need um, aging in place uh, facilities or, or um, those type of uh, amenities, but it's actually... Um, what what opened my eyes was actually it's it's also making it safe for the caregiver mm-hmm. because yeah, that's a no big kidding. part of it. Good point. Um, you you know, move somebody around, put them in a shower, help them upstairs. This kind of it can be scary. Exactly, yeah. and and the thing is, um, the caregiver is not always someone that you hire out. Sometimes it is the spouse. So mm-hmm. it's it's either the wife or the husband. And if um, one person is already in a, in a situation where they do need assistance, and the caregiver, whether it be the the wife or the husband, if they get hurt, well, then everybody is actually at a loss at this point. Or if it's their even their child. I mean, their child, maybe the parents are retired and the child comes in to help out. 
But at that point, if the child is the one that you know may have a family and also has their life and a job, and all of a sudden they get hurt and they're not able to provide for their family, so even more so, it's kind of a, 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 a double step, I guess, that happens. Yeah, and you know, Nathan Park, you, you know, you're going in for this certificate, but I'll bet you that you've already found out and pointed out to everybody else that, that, that this multi generational family of builders have been doing a lot of this on its own because it it, it runs in the family. I mean, you know, what 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 do you tell somebody that that wants to know? Okay. Uh, I think I want to do this agent in place thing or multi generational living thing, but exactly what do I do? Because I don't know. Uh, actually, Mike, um, you know, we've been doing this such a long time, and not not all families has that in the back of their minds. But in all our designs, we always uh, consider not only building for now, but also the future. You know, we're not getting any younger, and then we're always getting older. Hopefully, when we get older, we don't need need assistance, but sometimes we do. And you know, my, my background a little bit is uh, I used to work for a home care um, a unit that used to um, uh, set up equipment and oxygen machines and everything like that in a family's home. So, you know, they could have the same kind of conveniences uh, in home mm-hmm. rather than um, having, you know, the hospital bill. You know, I can tell you from personal experience, and I know that you know this is right up your alley. Uh, I had some surgery a while ago, and it was going to be a, a week or two to recuperate, and my radio station at the time were such uh, misers that they made me work. So they made a studio at my house. They put soundproofing on the walls. But they gave me this bed that had this adjustment to it. Um, I do know that what you're talking about is challenging for a company that supplies these things if the house is not prepared for it, right? Like wheelchairs and ramps and beds and all that stuff. you got to have the room. Right. So we always take into consideration, you know, accessibility. You know, you want a minimum of a three-feet hallway. You know, we like to see in our designs, like, Three and a half feet. That's more comfortable. Mm-hmm. The more room that you have to to mobilize yourself would be easier for not only um, the the caregiver but also you know the the person who needs the help. Too. Hey, I, I I've learned a really interesting story from this one lady. Everybody knows my wife's a realtor. One of her realtor friends had a house that she was selling for her client, and it had super wide hallways. And to to detract attention for that, she put up some tables and some little half tables and stuff in it to make it look like it was, you know, a little bit more crowded. <laughs> because some people don't understand the value of having that. But I guess now, uh, especially Nathan, when you talk to people that are aging in place or thinking about it, that you need to make those those changes while you're doing your remodel or your additional bedroom because otherwise you go back and retrofit it. It could probably be pretty more expensive. Right. You want to do everything uh, one time. And uh, on top of that, um, you know, one, one thing is that uh, when, when, you, when you're thinking about building for um, not only now but the future, then you take care of everything um, up front rather than later on, like how you said, you know, it could be more costly. Yeah, and, and Rodney, what about this? You know, I do know that a lot of people are young. They're in denial. They don't think they're bulletproof, right? They're, they're healthy. They, can, they, don't, they want three flights up before they go to the master bedroom up in the tower. But in actual fact, you probably counsel your, your families and say, look, this is how you guys are now, but this is how some of our other clients want it, and maybe you should think of making some provisions. What are some of the things that you do up front that may not be visible when I walk into my house, but it's behind the walls? You guys are preparing the house for other stuff. Yes, that's true, Mike. And uh, one thing about this class, uh, uh, the instructor of this class is Kirk uh, Kikuyu. K- Kiryu. Oh, Kiryu. Yes, I'm sorry. And uh, he, he's actually a listener of, of the show, Mike. And, but the thing is hey, that... Well, um, great. You say his name wrong. Now yeah, you're going to yeah, get... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, <laughs> Kirk. <laughs> but, <laughs> sorry, Kirk. But his, um, the one thing about the class, a, a portion of the class, and this is across uh, the BIA, it's the National Association of Home Builders, um, which is our parent organization, mm-hmm. but the the course is designed for not just the um, the design and the nuts and bolts of it, but also the dialogue portion of how you approach someone mm-hmm. that may um, think everything is fine and dandy, just like you said, you know, yeah, um, just build my whole master suite on the top floor, you know, yeah, I'm gonna yeah, walk yeah, up yeah. 14 stairs, yeah. I don't care, right? Um, yeah, but so wait, I, just wait until the hip goes out. Exactly. Or, you know, you got two bad knees, or you, exactly. or you, like, you look like you're a bull-legged cowboy. And, and you, so, you know. you know what is funny is because um, it reminds me, I have a client right now um, up, up the hill up here on the level heights that we're, um, I'm designing for, and the mom is, uh, the, the son is a caregiver, the mom is 94 years old. They live on a down slope. You, if anybody knows the level heights, is way up on either the... Either up or down. Yeah, you're either going to be up right. or down. That's, no more levels. Yeah, you got yeah, 30 yeah. steps going down or, or 30 up, steps yeah. going up, right? But the mom, she walks up these 30 stairs every day and, you know, hangs out on the front yard and uh, on front driveway. And I'm trying to say, you know, I'm trying to tell her, you know, um, we're going to try and make the house so you can come straight in from the driveway. And she, look, she looks at me like, 
how you gonna do that? I like, oh, no worry, you know, Miss. We're, we're gonna make it so that you can come straight in, and then you can walk out anytime you want to come out and you know, um, you know, get some fresh air and you know, watch the cards go by. And she looks at me. She said, I, I don't think so. And I like, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, well, you know but, but it's funny. Yeah, I found out one thing, and and we can all come into this a little bit. That you know, people are in denial and stuff, but in actual fact, it it only takes one incident. When then and somebody now is immobilized and you know to be able to just go up a flight of stairs, what I think is you saw you suffer a quality of life. In other words, you're you're not comfortable moving around, so you don't move around. So pretty soon somebody's in bed watching TV all day and and their health just deteriorates. They don't get exercise. They don't have visitors. They don't want people to see them. And you know and and I know that that's some of the things that, uh, probably Alan that you get. You want to convince that lady who's 94, I know, Grandma, you can hike up and down the stairs now, but you never know. You know, you got to get ready. Yeah. No, it, you know, that that was the whole thing about it. I think the whole thing with ADA, what I learned was, you know, the ultimate um, goal is safety. Mm-hmm. Safety for the people that live in there. Safety but, for know, the, like you said, for the caregivers. And also for the caregivers. And there was another portion that was um, that was interesting to me was um, they, they called it visitability. Um, being able to have people come over mm-hmm. because let's say you know you're um, the person that's living in that home is fine you know they're active yeah, they, yeah. they get around fine but all of a sudden their friends start getting in um, injuries and, and hurt and they won't need walkers they need wheelchairs and the person's home is not actually um, uh, equipped to allow sure. the friends to come over now so Which the, means now they don't you know? and now again the, the person that's active now kind of becomes you know kind of mm-hmm. lonely I guess you could call it um, but you know going to what my cousin mentioned um, wanting three and a half uh, foot hallways it does play a difference the minimum is about three feet mm-hmm. um, and it's funny because they made us sit in wheelchairs through this class we all yeah, had terrific. one day that we had to sit yeah, now you know now yeah. we know I mean it was a lot of planning just to try to you know get your food try to get water and, and try to do things with a wheelchair um, it, w- it was very difficult but beyond that three feet it felt I was going to scrape my knuckles the whole time I was doing wow. this. It was there just, go. you know, and they got different sized wheelchairs, so obviously that makes a difference. But just that alone, I was like, I was actually afraid to scrape my knuckles as I was going mm-hmm. through this through this exercise. So it was re- it was really interesting. It was eye opening. Yeah, and I'm and I'm just starting to guess, and and maybe the 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 real ability this comes in is that we are living a lot longer and everything. And Nathan, I know this is one house that you guys did. I can't remember where this. One of you will remember this. But this this couple were both in wheelchairs, and um, they wanted all of the cabinets and the heights lower because they couldn't reach stuff. They couldn't get to the sink. You know, brushing teeth was a humbug and all of that kind of stuff. Yeah. So there are some people, I would guess, Nate, that are just saying, look, I don't want to build this for somebody else. I want to build this for us. I want to. Be, I want right now. I want the toilets lower or higher or whatever the case may be. So that, is that part of the initial checklist or what? Oh, yes, we take in those considerations. And you know what, uh, Mike, we do help um, the families think those things out. You know, not, not as um, not as this particular as uh, counter heights, but even uh, wall outlets also that helps, yeah? Yeah, of course. Uh, when when yeah. you're mobile, you know, immobile like that. I mean, so, yes, we take all that into consideration. Yeah, I saw this TV thing the other day. You guys would have, you would have both laughed and cried a little bit because it was about this couple who are, our uh, ADA house has been totally ADA for them. And they do everything. Uh, they, they, they vacuum in a wheelchair. They, they, they do all the things. Wow. They have a Roomba. You know, the vacuum that goes <laughs> around by itself. And the father said, I don't like it. I just, I'd rather do it myself. He's there with the wand and all of that stuff. So I guess that part of the vetting out process that you guys are the front row guys, you know, Josh and you and Nathan, um, you're making the initial contact. And I'm guessing that a lot of this stuff doesn't come up right off the bat. What really comes up is how much is it and how many square feet and what's it going to cost? Yeah, it's exactly what comes <laughs> up. And then, you know, um, I think what, um, what one thing to think about is yeah, um, the cost. You want to mm-hmm. compare your cost of, okay, how much is it going to cost me to actually do this and um, – uh, retrofit or or build new um, you know build a home that's going to be able to accommodate for my my future um, but also you want to take it into account okay if I go to a facility how much is that going to cost yeah, no if kidding. I take you know a let's lot. exactly yeah. and in and, and it's a duration of time that that money is, is going to either dwindle down or unless you got extra funding but if you take that same amount and say you're planning for two years um, you know you're, you, the, the monies that you have was going to allow you to live for about two years in a facility mm-hmm. What are you going to do after that? Yeah, and by the way, medicine's keeping you a lot longer. 
And, you know, back in the day, 60, 65 was really old. Now that's spring chicken. Yeah. You know? and they, <laughs> yeah. Very important. That's a good way to segue. Look, you can go to atlasconstruction808.com and see really good examples of this aging in place and some of the, the scope of the work that they do. But it's it's sort of a fortunate segue, uh, Rodney, because we talk about next week we're going to be uh, getting together again with our friends from Hawaii, Hawaii USA uh, FC Federal Credit Union. And I bet they have some good news because the feds, uh, you know, holding their heels for a while, and they, from what I understand, have developed some packages based on Atlas's ability to build a home at the right price. Yes, correct. So we found a partnership with Hawaii USA Federal Credit Union, which is uh, very advantageous for our, our clients or our families that we work that work with us. And we're constantly researching and doing the research not only on building products, uh, construction techniques, design techniques like this class that we just talked about. But we do this constantly and also on uh, financing. There's different terms and different rates. I mean, everybody talks about rates and percentages, Mm -hmm. but not just rates, but also terms and customer service. What does Hawaii FCU bring to the table? And we believe it's really a customer service oriented business uh, like we are. And so we find it was a real good mesh to partner with them and to see um, how we can move forward. We're adding a whole nother building seminar, not this month, but next month with them. Uh, We're going to be partnering with them over at their uh, college walk location. Mm -hmm. this big place over there down by the If they have good food, I'll come. Yeah, uh, definitely. (laughs) Come by, come by. We are going to have food. We're going to have dinner. Uh, So not this coming uh, uh, set of seminars, but the following ones, uh, we're going to be there. on. uh, uh, We're adding a third seminar, and it's going to be not just for uh, building and construction and and everything we talked about in the other seminars, but this seminar is also going to be... include also ADUs in there. Okay, now you're listening on the 19th and 20th. I want you to go back to your uh, your Star Advertiser Friday paper and take a look at the uh, the story about Atlas. It says, headline, customer service key to company success. And I'm going to get into that a little bit. It's a great story written by somebody named uh, Elsie Kakazu, and she's not a relative. She's just a, she's a newspaper person, so this is her, her, her own look at this whole thing. But I think that what happens is a lender, and Rodney, you've got to explain this to people. A lender has got to vet out a client to see if that client can qualify for financing. But one of the things that the lender really wants to know is, okay, who's building this house? And who made who came up with these numbers? You have a relationship with this, these guys at Hawaii USA Federal Credit Union based on performance, and that may, that means that a customer has a better opportunity to get a good loan at the right rate because the bank the the lender knows that you're doing the work. Oh, definitely. There's no other uh, group of people in the world that are more cautious than a banker. Yeah, Mike. Uh, because yeah, no you know, they're lending Conserv- money. <laughs> conservative is a kind <laughs> word. Right? Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. yes, yeah. yes. Uh, they are very uh, conservative, and so before they would uh, partner with us, they did uh, you know vet us out. They did look at um, our work. They did you know did research. And, and the funny thing is, we actually. Um, a few of their management people in, in Hawaii, USA, we actually built their homes. And mm-hmm. so this is what kind of turned their eye towards our direction at first. They were looking for people. They kind of um, interviewed uh, uh, different companies. And when they heard from their own uh, management people that uh, we built their home and they were happy with us, uh, they said, well, let's give, you know, give us a try. So we've met. Um, we've been going through these discussions for a few months now before. They don't, like I said, you know, they're very cautious. They don't just jump into anything. They want to make sure everything is going to line up, everything works. And also with us too, right, we want to make sure that um, – the people fit good with us. And, and again, you know, I cannot urge uh, and say it more that our whole purpose is to make sure that we're doing the right thing for the families that, give, uh, that privilege us and give us the opportunity to work for them. And so we want to make sure if we're steering them in that direction, it's in the right direction. Yeah, good point. And, you know, uh, I know that, Nathan, because once again, you guys are the, the, the point guys, the first, uh, first line of contact. And I know that most people... They think that if they bank at such and such bank, then naturally they're going to go to that bank uh, to get their financing. Let's talk about at what point in time somebody does that. Right now, a listener might be listening to our program and come to a seminar and say, I want to come see them, and, and then you guys have you guys out. But you got to start thinking about money early in the piece. At what point in time does that, you, that subject usually come up, in the very beginning or after the first meeting or when? Uh, actually, that comes out when we provide our families that's looking forward to build uh, when we come out with their estimates. Mm-hmm. And then, um, you know, one thing is that um, we, we let our families know that on Wednesdays, all us cousins, we're, we're, we're not out uh, doing appointments. We're in the office, actually, 
and we're doing a lot of legwork in uh, researching, you know, better, more innovative products, and also interviewing lenders, credit, un uh, credit unions, and banks. So, you know, our job is to get the best out there for our families at the most economical and best services. So that's what we're doing for our families. So, you know, that's what also uh, sets us apart from other uh, contracts. You know, it, but was I right in sometimes saying that maybe, you know, you've been – just there's a bank in your neighborhood and you've just been going there for convenience or whatever, but they may not really know you and they, they, they may not really be able to do that. So I, I would guess that once you've come up with an estimate, then the homeowner's job is to shop around a little bit and decide who their lender is going to be. Uh, actually, we've done that legwork for them already, and they're pretty much confident with us on who we recommend. I'm going to let you know something. Uh, it's all about you know terms and rates and what the fees are, right? Um, because one thing, a lender... Uh, isn't really in the business of loaning money. In fact, um, their business is getting a loan and selling a loan. That's how they make their profits. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, you know, as far as when, uh, if we think that we're going to go with a local lender that, you know, um, that we want our money to stay here, I feel more safe and confident. That's, that's not the case. They might service the loan, but they, they, they have sold off the loan. So in order for our lender to make more loans, they need to sell you loans. Yeah, and that's pretty interesting, Rodney. I don't know how many times you guys have come across that, but uh, we recently went through a refi uh, of our house so that we can have you guys do a project at home for us. And one of the things that uh, the, one of the papers from the lender says, oh, by the way, uh, this might be sold. Oh yeah, you know, so they they tell you what they're going to do. Oh yeah, definitely. You know, um, a mortgage a mortgage loan or or a package is like a commodity basically mm -hmm. that gets traded uh, time and time again. You we know what happened with that mortgage default swap. That was um, spooky. Huh? That was yeah, very yeah, bad, yeah. right? So, um, but um, I pr pretty much all um, uh, conventional mortgages fit into a neat little kind of. Uh, uh, Peg for Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac. I know mm -hmm. our listeners have heard those those names tossed around. But Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac has a guideline, and they basically, if you you package a loan and you keep it in their guidelines, you basically can um, stack it together with other loans, and then you sell it off. And people, what happens is they so say they charging you four percent or three percent or whatever it is, they'll sell it off for you know just a portion of that instead of having to wait the thirty years mm -hmm. to um, you know to get paid off on it. And Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac is like a clearinghouse. For mortgages. What, what I think is important is we talked earlier that earlier in the week, uh, the Fed came out and announced that they weren't going to be. Everybody sort of anticipated maybe a quarter of point or half a point rise in 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 that magic number, which is at zero. Uh, so obviously, when when rates are really low like they have been, the lender is even going to look at the borrower even more closely because they're not really making a lot of money. So they got to make sure that they're they're lending it out to a good risk. Further, given reason why when when uh, Hawaii USA FCU comes in, that they understand you have already given me, the homeowner, a pretty good price, I'm going to get my value, and so they're going to be more comfortable in lending to me. Yes, for sure. So they have a bunch of uh, underwriting guidelines that we that the loan has to you know uh, stand up to, and part of that, or part of the main part, is making sure that if they're going to let us lend a family or someone the money to do a construction work, that that construction is going to be done because a lot of the collateral or the security is based on the finished product. Okay, and that's going to be next week. You're going to meet the folks from Hawaii USA Federal Credit Union here on the program. Um, if you do have a question about finance that you want answered, uh, you can't call us because we are not live, but you can certainly email us. You can go on online to atlasconstruction808.com and do a contact us, or you can send one to the Mike Buck Show because that's a great idea that we'll have a set of questions that we understand comes from some of you homeowners or prospective homeowners on sort of what you need to know. Um, I, I want to change a little bit, and this kind of surprised the guys a little, because there's been recently a lot of press, Rodney, and I want to get the personal opinions of you and Nathan and, and Alan, but I do know that this whole thing of this ADU sounds like a gift from heaven coming down from Uncle, uh, Uncle Mayor Caldwell, that everybody's going to get rich and everybody's going to have rental units. I want to make sure that people know that they ought to look at this thing with a great degree of caution. Yeah, one thing for certain is you want to make sure before you go to uh, to con uh, contemplating or considering doing an ADU on your property is to to make sure that you do all the research. And uh, one thing about us is when someone comes to you, I, I, I actually have uh, two clients that are already in the process of doing the ADU. We're waiting for the ordinance to clear mm -hmm. uh, the co uh, the council and then also. Uh, you know, clear with the mayor. Um, we were there from the start. You know, we gave testimony at the planning commission. Um, and, and so we want to make sure that 
um, when someone goes through this process that we, you know, my cousin Nate's like to say, you know, uh, cross our T's and dot our I's, mm. yeah, more so in this situation because uh, there are some certain requirements that are very specific to this ADU, not only on just the size of the ADU, but also um, how you go about permitting it and the processes that are involved. It's very similar to the uh, original Ohana mm-hmm. um designation or zoning but there are are other things that need to be done so we want to make sure that when you come to us um we're gonna make sure that we have all that front end information and and a checklist for you to make sure that your property uh complies to all these requirements yeah and that's that's an important point to consider also you'll know that we've already been talking about it that atlas is working on a specific set of uh uh, programs for three different sizes, the 400 and the 600 and the 800 square foot ADU. But one thing that, that you said earlier, Alan, that I, and I know that a lot of seniors are starting to think, oh, here's my ace in the hole. You know, I go out, I get this ADU, and, and I'm in good shape now, and, you know, my, my kids can live in it or whatever. But later, when I need care, I want a place for my caregiver. So I think that a lot of people are going to maybe jump the gun on this thing and, and start thinking of that. What what initial thoughts have you personally on on how this might, you know, either jam up a neighborhood or be very attractive? Um, you know, I think everyone's concerned, and it, of course, it's it's it is valid. I mean, uh, more parking, more cars on the street. Um, one of the requirements is that you do provide some um, off street parking for this ADU unit. Um, however, you know, if there's more, every family has more than just mm-hmm. two cars. You yeah. know, if you got kids, you got um, you know additional people living in the home, you're gonna have more cars. But um, you know, I think it is a good idea. Um, I've actually, I am um, currently working with a client that is thinking of doing ADU for her future purpose of a caregiver. Yeah. And so it is a, a very good option for that reason. Um, you know, and, and planning for the future. And it's funny, actually, there's there's some clients that are actually thinking, you know, they're getting older, they want to downsize. They don't need this big house anymore. That's a really good point. So, so, when, so for instance, what if caregiving is going to be, you know, three, four thousand, five thousand dollars a month? If you have an ADU that's 600 square feet, you and mama move into that, rent your house out to a family because maybe your mortgage is down, and this gives you maybe an, another little edge of confidence. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Okay, Nathan, when, when, when this gets bandied all about, the bottom line is, is going to be the, the personal feeling about it. Um, what are your thoughts? I mean, you know, everybody's got their own two cents over here. You've been watching this, I'm sure, and I'm sure it's coming up with some of your clients. Um, good, bad, or ugly? I think it's a good thing. Uh, one thing is that we do have a crisis here on, you know, our rental market being too high. Um, you know, I like the fact that it, it'll help more families uh, get into affordable rentals. And it also gives um, the opportunity of the homeowner uh, generating income for their own family, too. So I, I think it's a plus. Yeah. All right. So that, that doesn't mean that you pick up your phone and you call Atlas right this minute and start doing this. But you go to atlasconstruction808.com and you and you find out what you want to do. Earlier I said that, uh, Rodney, there was a nice, there's a nice piece written you guys in Friday's uh, Star Advertiser um, <clears throat> on the new home and build with the owner's uh, uh, interaction. Let's talk a little bit about that and particularly um, uh, either Alan or Josh, let's talk about what's really important about this cloud-based monitoring system. The paper made a big deal of that, and I know that it's kind of unique to you guys. And so what uh, what I need to know is, Alan, you get into this because I know that you, that was part of what you did. Um, this is something that's kind of cool. I know it's, it's available to I mean, anybody can figure out a way to do this, but you guys make it easy for the homeowner. Yeah, so we want them to feel very much integrated into this whole process. The, the last thing we want is for them to feel like, well, I'm, you know, for, for it to come out of their mouth to say, uh, you know, I hired them, but I'm not sure what's happening right now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that, yeah. that's just not a good feeling, especially when you, you're putting down that much money. So for us, um, it is important for, that they feel integrated. And, and every client is different. They may use it more. They may use it less. Some, mm-hmm. you know, and, and in no way does this um, negate the the. Uh, tried and true fashion of giving me a call or text yeah. me or email me. Yeah. Um, but it is another way for them to just feel in contact with the company, know what's happening on their project, even though they may have not spoke to, spoken with anyone. So as far as the cloud-based program, it is an internet-based uh, program. So you can access it from anywhere in the world as long as you have an internet connection. And on top of that, you're able to see, you know, we have our, our, our foreman uh, basically making daily logs as mm-hmm. far as what they completed throughout the day. Um, we have our selections on top of there. So as you make your choice 
resources for your home, it's also on top of there. It's logged in, and you can always reference back and take a look at that. Mm, that's really cool. There's also your 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 schedule on there. So mm. if you're following your your flow chart of your your project, you can kind of expect where uh, things are happening, and we will make adjustments if anything. If there was a rain out, there was something that happened, we'll make adjustments to that, and you'll be able to know. Oh, okay, there was a rain out that day, and and partially it is on our end to help us track what happened to that project if it did run away from us. For yeah, us, okay. it's just making sure that we know, um, you know, there's a legitimate reason. We don't want guys just taking longer than they need to for certain parts of the project. You know, uh, Nathan, you mentioned earlier, and, and Nathan Park is is one of the the project coordinators uh, and who gets out there and has that initial meeting uh, with the uh, with the client. We talked about the money a little bit, and if people go to AtlasConstruction808.com, they see a bunch of really nice houses but let's talk about how the inside of the house is not a standard job that you have allowances for this allowances for that and that a, that a prospective client or homeowner uh, can expect to get involved in the decision making process about just about everything uh, yeah you know one thing is that um, being that we're a full service contractor meaning to say that we do drafting and designs uh, we assist you in financing also we um, you know we uh, process all your permits uh, you know, we spend all their time helping the families, um, you know, design and customize their home to their lifestyle and their function and helping, you know, family think things out, you know, aging in place, accessibility, not only building for now, but also the future. You know, we spend all their time on their designs, and then once the once your your plans are done, your budget is okay, and your contract is signed, and then, you know, we start initiating your permit processing, you might think that, oh, you know, now we can uh, kick up our feet and wait for Atlas Construction to uh, build our homes, but we're not done yet. There's a lot of shopping to do. <laughs> so there's a lot of sh- uh, selections in a, in a process. You know, all our es- estimates are complete turnkey except refrigerator, washer, dryer, and solar. That's the only things that are not in our estimates. So, you know, there's cabinet selections. You know, there's countertop selections, there's paint selections, flooring selections. You know, even to your, your doorknobs and your disposal, your sinks and your, your faucets. And, you know, all our allowances are based upon medium and above products. Mm-hmm. The reason for that is because anything below medium might look well, but it does not work good. And you end well, up calling us back. Yeah, and that's a, a really great point, Rodney. You talk about your cousin Bruce. Uh, you guys don't want to call you. You want to go back and and have a you know an afternoon cold beer with your client. You don't want to go back, be, be replacing this or replacing that. So you have standards, and your standards. That's when people are com- comparing bids. There might be a difference because there are certain things you guys just won't do. Yeah, there is. Um, you know, sometimes Mike, we have the opportunity where a person comes or we meet with them and they co- they come down to our office and they already have plans already made or done and they you know they've worked up a set of plans with uh, either draftsman or architect and um, a lot of times we find that it, it, there's deficiencies in it there's stuff that uh, need to be done but somehow got overlooked mm-hmm. and so for us when we look at a plan like that we make sure that when we when we discuss it with the uh, families that we'll give them a price but we'll say you know um, here's this stuff that's missing this should be here this should be here and we have the price for that. So this is a, a separate price. And what we normally do is we're going to give you a price of what's just on there, what's on the plan, and then give you a price where um, everything is included so that that way you don't get um, surprised in the end or have like that dreaded word, change order, that mm-hmm. we talk about, is that we want to make sure that you have a full uh, full um, information to know how to get your house or home or addition build correctly and done right and that way you know we really our philosophy is low maintenance and a long lifespan yeah good quality and and let's make sure nathan uh that people know that when we talk about an estimate that estimate is one thing and then when you go through all of the vetting out of you know good better best and and, and the things for the different appliances then you come up with a uh with a contract i mean the the estimate is just that yeah, you know, we, we've been doing this such a long time, um, um, and I want to reiterate that we are a family company. We have six generations on this island, and four generations of our families into uh, general contracting, real estate, and developing. So we not only understand general contracting, but also uh, real estate and developing also, so we know how to optimize your land. But, you know, we've been doing this such a long time where we know what looks good in your home, what works well, and most importantly, what will last the years to come. So, you know, you're right. We have our own standard of construction where we start from. And, and what is that is that we have uh, all our – we start with that with the basic uh, – our, our, our estimate of our mm-hmm. standard of construction. It comes with uh, dupane windows, 
Uh, it comes with the uh, best paints. You know, our paints last 8 to 12 years. We have the paints last 3 to 5. We put a 50-year asphalt exchange or roof as your roof thi- roofing. And we're looking at all all wood cabinets in your kitchen and mm-hmm. bath. So nothing in our construction is particle board or press wood. Then you're looking at a solid surface uh, uh, countertop in your kitchen and bath, whether it be a, a granite countertop or a quartz. Uh, you have that on selection, that choice. And as for flooring, you're looking at ceramic tile in the kitchen and bath and quality carpets in the living and bedroom area. So, you know, how we handle anything outside, we, sta- we start with that from uh, our standard construction and your estimates and how we handle anything that's outside our standard con- uh, construction, like, for instance, flooring, for example. You know, sometimes we don't like carpets, you know, uh, whatever the reason might be, you know, allergies, we have pets or, you know, whatever it is. Um, so how we handle anything outside our standard construction is that we give you the material labor for our standard construction with the quality carpet mm-hmm. and then the material labor for the flooring that you desire. And you either pay the difference or we owe you a credit upon that item. Okay, and interestingly enough, uh, th- that's where, and Nathan says this a lot, uh, Rodney, that you guys, it's where the rubber meets the road. I- you have an expectation, and that means that, let's talk about the other side of things. When you guys, say, find a piece of property, and as a group, develop it and put some houses on it, what a home run it is when somebody comes into the house and they don't want to change anything. Wow, this is, what, this is exactly what I would have done. Yeah, uh, yeah. so that does happen. Um, we spend a lot of time, right now we're doing... Um, a couple uh, duplexes up in Waipahu in a, mm-hmm. new, in a new subdivision there. And uh, we do spend uh, as much time as we do with everyone else's job. Uh, this is a project that we're going to put out there and, we, you know, we're going to offer it to uh, new home buyers. And, and it is. It is true. Uh, there, there are things that you want to kind of um, be subtle about, like as far as colors and be neutral. And there's some things that, you know, you just want to make it mm-hmm. make like a... Make it shine and make make it sparkle, you know. So there, there are certain items that we're looking at and uh, different products to do that. But as far as when we have like a homeowner that we're designing and build for, um, everybody you know has their own different traits and personalities. As far as uh, our listeners out there, if you go on our website and look through our photos, you'll see uh, some homes that have colors or or, or countertops or cabinets that may not be. Um, Conventional, should I say? Yeah, how about ugly? How <laughs> yeah. about just plain ugly? No, 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 it's not. It's not ugly. It's just not You're conventional. Being way too nice. yeah, it's yeah. just not conventional. Yeah. But but it is basically for you know it's it's a home that's designed and built um, personally and custom for your family and your needs. So a lot of times when we have our open houses, eh, we used to have a. Uh, we have, uh, believe it or not, Mike, we've been doing this for a while. So we have, like, we call them our groupies, right? They're mm-hmm. like Atlas groupies. They come to every open house. They come and look at all our work. And, and at one time we had this, um, from when we first started, um, we had this uh, dad and son. I think this was kind of like their hobby, you know, on the weekends, on Sundays, afternoon. Yeah, like some, some people go garage sale, Yeah, yeah, like some shopping, people go Maybe yeah, yeah, they yeah. drop the mom and the yeah. wife off at the garage sale down the road. I don't know, mm. but they would always show up. And they'd be like, oh, yeah, what about this? What about that? And, you know, we, I, we'd always tell them, you know, um, this house is, you know, yeah, we understand that that makes a lot of sense. But this, you know, this house was designed for, for this person and their use and, and their preferences and their, their personality, right? And, um, and But it's the funny thing is uh, when we first started and they first started coming around, they had all kind of comments, right? Now, like the last time, I think I seen them at the last open house. Uh, and he was like, you know what? Yeah, it looks pretty good. It's yeah, getting getting good. You know, it's funny. But, yeah, but it's you funny. know, we've actually mentioned that before. And, and Nathan, when I first met you, one of the things that I picked up right away is that as you go through this with these people, that you know, you guys are builders and you build hundreds and hundreds of places every year. Uh, most of us consumers or clients, it's it's our one shot. So it's not something we make a fast decision on. Or if we do, it's usually the wrong one. So a lot of people want to wait and wait. So that must mean that you guys have four generations of hands-on patient people out there. <laughs> <laughs> got to be patient, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, Mike. Um, you got to be pretty patient, especially with the permitting system that's going on right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. You know something? Before we could get permits like um, four, to, uh, four to six uh, weeks, I mean, I mean, two to four weeks, and it didn't matter if you had a new home or an additional renovation. But now when they implemented that all new homes has to go in e-plans and digitally, you know, when it first came out with that system, uh, they said it was going to be a more efficient system. Uh, it took like two months, and we, we thought, you know, that wasn't bad. I mean, you know, it's a new mm-hmm. system. It's going to get better. But you know what? 
Whoops. It got worse. <laughs> yeah. They said smile. Things could get worse, and you guys smiled, and they got worse, right? Yeah. It's, it's a terrible thing. And I know we rely so much on technology. That won't happen when you go to the cloud-based program with Atlas. It's pretty simple. It's not going to go crashing on you, right? Yeah. But, you know, I still think that that's, that really bears a lot of thinking because – I, I want to go back to this ADU thing for just a minute. I, I, we're not ready to announce the Atlas full-on program because I know you guys are still really polishing it up and making sure that you want to do that way. But I'm kind of worried that a lot of people, Rodney, are going to jump into a quick decision, and there's going to be projects started, and they're going to stall up, and you guys are going to get called three months into it saying, hey, can you come up here to Kaimaki? we got this ADU that needs fixing. Yeah, um, that, that is true. I'd like to caution our listeners, especially, you know, um, you know, you guys been with us since we started our, our show here with Mike, and uh, we would really want to want you to err on the side of caution. This is something new. Of course, again, going back to the permitting part, uh, like my cousin Nate was talking about, this is going to be a whole deluge of uh, more applications again, right, mm-hmm. going into the system. So one thing we want to make sure is that, you know, everything is done right, um, not just your plan, but also where you're going to put it on your property as far as uh, there's different different. Um, I guess requirements for different zones, uh, residential zones. So like a R3.5 or R5 or R7, R10, uh, they have different requirements. So you, you really got to make sure that you do all your homework. And if you're not doing it and you're relying on uh, somebody that you just pick out of the phone book or somebody that you see there. You I know, think they ought to watch by. out for door to door. They ought to watch out for people yes. sticking things, you know, on their, on their gates, on their handles. I mean, I, this is a wide open opportunity for dishonest people. Yeah, th- yeah. it is. And so, you know, this is something that, you know, you really have to be careful about. You really have to do your due diligence and, um, you know, go through the review process, look at, you know, their online reviews, look at their DCCA reviews, look at the better business reviews. But even still then, right, um, is look at who has done one. That's why we're not on a, you know, we're not right now trying to um, go full on with this program. We have a few in the works right now. We want to see, uh, kind of test the water, see how it goes uh, as far as the permitting process, as far as the actual build itself mm-hmm. and what's going to happen. Uh, when we feel confident that this thing is, you know, we got the handle on this, then we are going to, like I said, start this ADU um, seminar. And it's probably going to be in a month or so, but uh, it's going to be called "Let Us Build an ADU for You." Yes, exactly. I made that up. But, <laughs> but, but I, there's another thing that's important, and I know once again, Alan, that this is what you guys hear on the streets when you go out to your initial meeting. There have been any number of things put in by a, a code to increase the efficiency. Uh, the drain on the systems and everything else. I think there's a lot of people out there that really don't understand that it's adding a lot to building costs to, to, to do this, to be in compliance with all these new requirements. But there is no way around it. I do know that some people will bootleg something in and not get a permit. I mean, right now, they got if somebody's going to build a new one, they have to have some sort of solar hot water or something, right? Yes. Depending on their neighborhood. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I, I I believe um you know as far as the ADU itself um although it's a new concept it is still gonna have to follow all of the same requirements as if you were just building a single mm-hmm. family dwelling so um you know one of the things is still following the fifty percent lot coverage you yeah. know just because now the ADU is passed does not mean that you can build it if you already took up your fifty right. percent you took up the advantage <laughs> of that big space in the first place you can't add four six or eight hundred square feet more on there's another thing too. The, the Some of the drawings that I've seen are these cheap-looking, flat-roof, little boxes, oh, you know, yes. and there's going to be some that are going to do that, right? Oh, and, yeah. And that's going to be ugly. It's going to, uh, yes, it's, it is going to be ugly. I mean, the idea here is, um, yes, you know, I mean, it, it's, it's a way to build, but for us, we do also look at the aesthetics of it. I mean, you could have a beautiful home, and then all of a sudden, you've got this thing that looks like a, um, a tool shed on the outside but you know you're having people rent out of that or or you know having family members live in it we do still um are very key on the aesthetics of the home yeah. so just to make sure that it does match and complement the home you know not to make sure. it stand out from the home yeah and you know there's another thing too and i don't know which one of you said this earlier but if you go to some of the big boxes nathan you can see uh these sheds that look like wow that's a nice little doll <laughs> why don't we make it a real house and and i know that some people have done that some people have rented out containers and and lawn sheds that that, that aren't are prepared for that what do you guys do as a company when you go out to a client's place that's looking to do something and you right away spot stuff that's that shouldn't be there that's that's not legal or they're certainly unpermitted 
Um, that's funny that you asked that. Uh, my uh, my 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 appointment last night had the very that very <laughs> thing. Yeah, you know? and you um, said we didn't talk before the show either. This <laughs> is just the the dog luck. Yes, and then you know, um, um, I guess what happened was, I mean, his grandpa, you know, he was a plumber in a trade, and then he did on uh, like couple things that you know did additions on the side of the home and in the rear. Uh, when I went out there last night, I found that, you know, um, Grandpa didn't uh, exactly follow the setback out there. And then, oh you know, that's that's most unfortunate because one thing is that uh, to proceed further, you know, I, I, I'm recommending that they do a survey first um, instead of, you know, uh, going uh, going ahead and spending, you know, some monies and investing some time. Um, and, and then they find out, you know, during construction and all of a sudden and there's a hold up on their uh, their project. And then you know, uh, Mike, you asked me um, uh, about what are my thoughts with ADU at one, um, you know, um, earlier in the show. You know, one thing is that I I was I was I was hoping that you know our 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 city and county, you know, our mayor and uh, everybody who was involved upon making this decision. I mean, you know, when they first came out with the Ohana permitted eligible properties, you know, before before time, you know, you could have it either 700 uh, square feet or 900 square mm -hmm. feet, and it could be detached. Then, then later on, you know, they they kind of, they change the guideline. Then all of a sudden, that you can have your ohana as big as you want, so long uh, that you uh, within the setback requirements. And then, but now it no longer can be detached. It would have to have a common wall. I, I would, I would, I would hope that you know they they took a look at this and then you know instead of going 800 square feet, I mean at least go uh, with a thousand square feet. Mm -hmm. Then you know the design ain't as much as challenging as the 800 square feet, especially if we we we're doing it for our our our, our parents or you know um, for a caregiver, you know for the accessibility that they desire inside that home. They so more space, yeah, yeah, do it yeah. right one time, right? Yeah, it, it, interestingly enough, because, Alan, you mentioned something that we should go back on, and that is, uh, you know, if they have some requirement by the, in the neighborhood about parking, that you've got to prepare it. One guy said that a lot of people are going to be uh, tempted to go above their garage or above their carport and, and strengthen it to the point where it can take this unit up top. Mm -hmm. I would expect that that's going to be a lot of it, but then you get into height restrictions, and not all neighborhoods you know, we'll do the 25 feet. At which point in time do you, have, as a builder, have to put your down, foot down and say to somebody, you know what, I, I happen to know because we've done this place down the street that you really can't do it the way you want to do it. We do, we, you know, we, we try to, um, so part of that is, is um, a lot of times we figure that out in the beginning, yeah. in, that first, in that first meeting, because of the fact that um, not only are we, we come in there to assess the home and find out what the scope of work is, but we are coming there with a printout of the property already. Yeah. So knowing that, okay, do they have an association? A lot of times, and I, and I believe, um, and I'm, I may be uh, speaking too early, but I'm thinking that a lot of associations may not be allowing these ADs use one because mm -hmm. you know it's planned development already sure so the space that they allotted is already either spoken for or you know it's been set in a certain way mm -hmm. um so that's one thing we find out okay are you an association no you're not okay so that's one hurdle we're, we're past and let's see what else is there um in certain neighborhoods yes there's height restrictions there's um certain view channels you can't block and sure. so the all these things will play into a factor um we try to um uh, educate ourselves early on knowing what neighborhood we're going into and what type of place we are so so that we can uh, best direct them and give them the, 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 the best estimate or the best assessment that we could. Yeah, and you, you mentioned something earlier that's really important to highlight and underline here, that a good number of these developments that were built by, say, a developer like a Gentry or uh, or all of these different, you know, mm -hmm. uh, Horton or whatever, right. that they actually plan for pretty much the maximum footprint on a lot. Oh, yeah. So th there's not a lot of space. I mean, you can go up, but you can't go out because it's pretty yeah. outspoken for. Yeah. Uh, Rodney, I think this is really important. We've actually alluded to this in a couple of programs before. I know that with some companies, it's really tempting to take a homeowner who's going wink, wink, wink about what they're doing. And that is usually about putting an additional dwelling on a piece of property. Some people call it a, a, uh, a rec room. Some people call it a pool house. Some people call it a barbecue area. S but the bottom line is they're trying to put in a rental unit. And I do know that you guys spock this out in the very beginning and say, wait a minute, we're not going to do this. Yeah, you know, um, when you get into that gray area, and, and, and unfortunately, you know, this whole ADUs or accessory dwelling units and Ohana uh, zoning and Ohana units, you know, it, it actually started back um, way with Eileen Anderson. You sure, remember way back, back then, yeah. right? So yeah. back in 81. And so this is when uh, they were looking at um, – 
doing the Ohana unit. And then what ha- what actually happened was just for our county, Honolulu, they started this uh, ordinance where you could build an extra unit on your property. It was limited in size. You had to have blood quantum and stuff like mm. that. And then yeah, um, good luck enforcing that. Down yeah, the road, right. Yeah, and then yeah. the, uh, and then actually what happened is the state took over and said um, the the state wrote uh, actually a. Uh, 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 you know, uh, revised statute, you know, state, mm-hmm. the state law saying that, you know, if you're a homeowner and residential, you could add a second unit. And they and they just left it blank like that. So there was a lot of things you could do with it. And so it was kind of a mess for a, a while, and it's just kind of changed and transformed into different versions. So along the line, there was ways to get around these little gray areas, and this is where your rec room or your hobby mm-hmm. room developed, right? Well, you know, I can remember, and I'm sure that, 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 that you guys had this in the company in the generations before, where in the very beginning, most of these Ohana, quote, units were kind of legit. There was a, a, a legitimate need. It was addressed. It was figured out. Uh, what they didn't tell you is, okay, well, we know we're doing this, but down the road people are going to punch holes in it and bend it to their own desires and shapes. Don't you see the possibility? People are kind of desperate right now in some respects. And I'm, I'm worried that there's going to be, once again, unscrupulous companies that are going to try to jump on the the greed of people and, and try to get something in there. So are you pretty confident by the time the city parses it out that permits are not likely to be... Uh, a given unless they meet the requirements that you mentioned earlier? Yeah, I'm pretty sure, Mike, uh, they're, they're, that the way that the ordinance, this new ordinance is written, uh, we would have liked it, you know, coming from the building industry, we would have liked it to be a little bit more um, liberal on the size of the lot uh, unit itself. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, we see that it fulfills a real good need. And, and it also, I, I think the mayor has some good ideas as far as, like my cousin Nate was saying, the crisis in our, our affordable rental market. Um, hopefully this you know, kind of increases the amount of units available and also makes it more competitive. So people who don't have the means to actually go out and buy a home can um, at least get, a, you know, a decent place to rent, right? We talk about the homeless all the time, right? Mike, you know, the guys out right here on the side of the street here. And, um, you know, part of that, you know, part of uh, that population or part of that group is people who are working, who are just cannot make ends meet and can't, you know, find a, an affordable rental unit. And I think, you know, all in part, I think this is going to be good for our community Yes, we're going to have to make sure that our, you know, the permitting situation and, mm-hmm. and the whole regulation of the of this whole ADU um, uh, notion is going to be enforced. And I feel pretty confident in uh, this is one thing I feel pretty confident that the city can do. Yeah, let's cross our fingers on that, because I want to tell you, gang, that, you know, Atlas has seen it. They, they've done it for generations. And in that, you know, that when you call them and I need you to go look right now, pretty soon there's going to be an ADU section on the website. But right now it's under construction. You can go Go look right now on what we do do at Atlas, and that's atlasconstruction808.com, atlasconstruction808.com. You can also get in touch with them through the Contact Us button, or you can drop me an email if there's something on this show you want to hear. And I want everybody to remember that next week when we get together, it's going to be a special day because, Rodney, you've invited uh, our friends uh, that, that you have a special relationship with now, and this is a Hawaii USA Federal Credit Union. What do you anticipate? What do you think people are going to hear when they tune in next time? Well, I think you're going to hear um, a, a group of people or persons that are, I, I think you've had them on before in the other shows, but uh, someone that has their best, the, the homeowner's best interest or the borrower's home uh, mm-hmm. best interest in mind. And also you find that, um, you know, they started out, and, and this was a little history lesson for me, they started out as, I think, the teacher's credit union. Mm-hmm. And, and, and they that, did, that's and, right. And yeah. they actually kind of grew to the largest uh, credit union in the state right now. And so I really um, uh, please uh, and look forward to bringing someone here. Um, hopefully we can get them on next, uh, next week and they can kind of give a shout out as far as what they're different. Um, uh, services that they do offer. Yeah, and that gang, the reason why uh, what, what Rodney was talking about, we had them in uh, several months ago on the Revolusa and Smarter Living Show. Uh, the, the specific packages that they put together for solar, which means if, you, if you're going to get a solar system, a uh, PV system, that they are willing to give you money because they know that it's a good investment. And also, a parting shot, they also know that when you deal with Atlas, it's a good investment. They've totally vetted Atlas construction out. So when Atlas comes uh, together to a homeowner and gives them an estimate, gives them a contract, and they got to go get financing, when they go and visit Hawaii USA Federal Credit Union, the, 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 the credit union already feels good about who they've selected as a builder. So that's the very important part of what we do here. And I want you to understand that this is not 
automatic. This just doesn't come automatically. There's lots and lots of people out in, in the business here, but as you heard early in the program, uh, you know, Atlas builds homes for generations, but it's not beneath them to go back to school, and they all did that. They went back to the BIA, the training day. We're talking about aging in place, and if you've got that coming up, you're going to come to a seminar pretty soon. I'm almost out of breath. Thank you so much for listening. We appreciate your being here. Tell everybody else we're on the air twice a week, and you can go to atlasconstruction808.com and learn more. Once again, that's Atlas atlasconstruction 808com Have a great weekend. We'll see you next time for the Atlas Home Construction Show. Thanks for joining us for the Atlas Construction Show. Tell your friends about us and come back again. For more information or to sign up for our next free home building seminar, log on to atlasconstruction808.com. <laughs>